Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction. This is what happens if we bring the sun to Earth. By the channel, cause Gazad did not shell. What happens if we bring the sun to Earth? No, seriously. Yeah, if we bring, uh, how is this even a video? I mean, uh, if we bring sun to the Earth, Earth evaporates basically, disintegrates at the atomic level, right? I mean, what's there to think? It's gonna get destroyed. How how did he make this seven minutes video out of that? I don't know. I guess there's more detail to that than simply that. I guess I don't know. But it's gonna be fun. This is by the channel Cuz Gazan. Not sure it's a great scientific channel. I love reacting to this channel. All the uh, different uh, areas from science that he covers, not just space, but everything, even the wildlife, animals, ants, and things. It's awesome. I have to quite a few Cuz Gazan videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cars playlist. I created for it. Uh, check out the playlist too, like Oli Sakashi Proxen, History, Internet Historian, CGP Grey, TS Zoo, and yeah, that's always fun. What would happen if you were to bring a tiny piece of the sun to Earth? Short answer, you hey, die. Man. Why the hell is this such a 144p? Long answer, it depends which piece of the sun. Like most of the matter in the universe, our sun is neither solid, liquid or gas, but it's plasma. plasma. Yeah. Plasma is when stuff is so hot that the nuclei and electrons can separate and flow around freely, which creates a goo-like substance. So yes, same things with the cold, right? If we bring something too close to absolute zero, which is kind of not possible, but you can probably do in a lab or something, all the matter acts in some kind of a unison. It becomes a fluidic type of thing, even though it's not a fluid. So if you, if you, you know, bring your, you know, put your hand inside that matter, that matter will move away. It will give way to your hand, and it will be weird, like sci-fi sci type of thing. So yeah, if, when it gets hot, it becomes plasma. When it gets really cold, it becomes, uh, you know, same thing. Like a plasma type thing, but it's cold. And it moves, basically. And all, all matter acts in unison. Yeah, I don't know, what's the name of that thing, that, that matter? I forgot the name, but yeah. You can imagine our sun as an extremely big, spherical ocean of very hot goo. The deeper you go, the denser and weirder the goo becomes. So let's bring three samples, each the size of oh, a house, to our something. lab here on Earth and see what happens. That's what I mean. What if we bring samples from the different layers of the sun to the Earth? What happens? Okay. First sample, the chromosphere. Oh, yeah. The chromosphere is the atmosphere of the sun, a layer of sparse gas up to 5,000 kilometers deep that's covered in a forest of plasma spikes that can be almost as big as Earth. It's pretty hot here between 6,000 and 20,000 degrees Celsius, yeah. but if we brought a sample of it to Earth, we're not really getting our money's worth. In the area where we take our sample, the chromosphere is over a million times less dense than air, so compared to our atmosphere at sea level, it's basically the same as bringing the vacuum of space down to Earth. The Let me guess, it's gonna implode in, create a shock wave that's gonna hurt the buildings and everything. The moment our sample arrives, it would immediately be crushed by Earth's atmospheric pressure and implode. Air would rush to fill the vacuum and use as much energy as 12 kilograms of TNT in the process. This creates a high-pressure shock wave which shatters glass, ruptures eardrums, and maybe some internal organs. If you're standing too close, it could kill you. So you'd better keep your distance. Let's go deep. So basically, what if you suddenly create a massive vacuum in, I guess, in the atmosphere? I guess it would be of the same effect. Per. A second sample, the photosphere. Beneath the chromosphere is the glowing surface of the sun, the photosphere, which produces the light we see. It's covered in a grid of a million hotspots called granules, each of them about as big as the United States and over 5,000 degrees Celsius. These granules are the tops of convective columns, churning gas that brings the heat up from the center of the sun to its surface. In these columns, a few hundred kilometers down, we take our second plasma sample. It has about the same pressure as our atmosphere on Earth. Though still much less dense than air, its heat supports it, so it won't implode. Our sphere now carries twice as much energy, as much as 25 kilograms of TNT. So it won't implode because it has same energy, but I guess it's still hot, so it's gonna burn things. Maybe. But this time as heat. 
For a dazzling instant, this plasma would glow with a million times the brightness of the sun seen oh, yeah. from Earth, instantly lighting fires throughout our lab. But a few milliseconds later, those fires are all that's left. The plasma has cooled to harmless gas floating up from the flaming ruins. What if we go deeper? Third sample, the radiative zone. Here, the plasma is about 2 million degrees Celsius and so dense and tightly packed that it creates a sort of maze for itself. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna guess here. Uh, this kind of dense plasma with that heavy temperature, if you bring the sample of that to Earth, I guess it's suddenly going to expand and explode with that much heat. I guess it's gonna be like a nuke exploded or something. Maybe. I guess we'll see. Energy in the form of photons tries to escape, but has to wander for hundreds of thousands of years, bouncing endlessly from particle to particle until it eventually finds an exit. Bringing matter from here to our lab is what experts call a very bad idea. As soon as it arrives in our lab... Now it's a bad idea. So far it was a fine idea, I guess. Lab, ...the extreme pressure that holds the plasma tightly together is gone, and the material explodes with the power of a thermonuclear weapon. There you Our go. lab, as well as the city around it, will be destroyed in an instant. It makes On the sense. bright side, there won't be any radioactive fallout. With our lab destroyed, we can abandon the illusion that we're trying to do any science today. What if we go much, much deeper? A core. Last sample, the core. Oh shit, core is even more dense, right? And there is a, you know, basically fusion is going on, thermonuclear fusion is going on there. So it's literally a massive hydrogen bomb. And the sample will be very powerful than any bomb that anybody created. So it's gonna be really bad, I guess, right? It would be like creating a literal sun because it's like a, you know, a thermonuclear reactor basically throwing on the atmosphere or something. So, it would, you know, it would be extremely bright and expand. It would be a literal bomb apocalyptic scenario probably. I don't know. Depends on the sample, but I'm pretty sure. Here in the central 1% of the star, we find a third of the sun's mass. The matter here is compressed by the weight of the entire star above it. In the center of the core, the temperature is 15 million degrees, hot enough to make helium by smashing together hydrogen, powering the sun by nuclear fusion. In billions of years after the death of the sun, this white core dwarf. will remain as a white dwarf. If we brought a sample of it to Earth, it would cause a lot of inconvenience. The biggest nuclear weapon ever detonated had an energy of 40 megatons of TNT, or a cube the size of the Empire State Building. Our sample has the equivalent of 4,000 megatons. This is... F That's Zara Bomba. The, look at the core sample. Just a sample small enough is that powerful. That's a thermonuclear bomb. This is similar to that, but bigger sample. Yeah, this is definitely going to be an apocalyptic scenario. Yeah, damn. Where would, would the Earth survive with that sample? I don't know. I mean, Earth would survive, right? Earth destroying an entire Earth requires a much more bigger sample than that. Yeah, maybe. Four billion tons of TNT, or a cube 1.3 kilometers high. To give you a sense of scale, this is the cube inside Manhattan. Damn. Once the sphere arrives on Earth, this super dense matter expands instantly and creates an explosion with the force of, well, the sun. If we get the sample in Paris in the morning, the citizens of London would see what looks like a second sunrise, but one that gets brighter and brighter and hotter and hotter until London burns to ashes. In a radius of about 300 kilometers around the blast, everything would be burnt. The shock wave would travel around the Earth multiple times. Most buildings in Central Europe would be flattened, eardrums would rupture, and windows break across the continent. The explosion would be apocalyptic, possibly human civilization ending. Damn. If humans did survive, we could count on the dust blown into the atmosphere to create a small ice age. So, if there is one tiny bright side, it would be that the explosion might be an effective way to control human-caused climate change for a few decades. While yeah, this is definitely cost? a good thing, all in all, we conclude that we should not try to bring the sun to Earth. <laughs> Please stay away. We've made a lot of questionable assumptions in this video, but our maths is real. If you're like... It's not question, it's common sense, even I guessed it. I mean, yeah, it makes sense when you think about it. it sun is basically a thermonuclear reactor in the space, all right? There is no up or down in space, so, you know, when you take a really hot 
thing which becomes plasma, that is plasma, and put it there, the pressure will create a ball and basically a star. So that is way too hot, right? So hot and pressurized that it creates thermonuclear fusion. So if you bring that here on Earth, that's literally a bomb. So yeah, this is the effect it would have, I guess. One thing is surprised me that, you know, uh, the, that, you know, uh, radiative zone sample from that you know, wouldn't cause, uh, you know, a radiation thing. How is that possible? Why is that? Why doesn't that cause, you know, radiation effect afterwards? That surprised me, but otherwise it, it makes sense. So, yeah. Remember people, uh, you know, if you want to support Kurzgaza in a nutshell, uh, go to the description with the original page link from there, you know, click swap.kurzgaza.org and support this channel. This is a great science channel, I love it, you know, this is the, you know, I guess the best animation ba based science channel that covers a lots of different field of science, which I love. Science is the one topic that I really love since I was a kid. So, you know, this, you know, space related, any any other topic, even the hell, even the fictional reality that covers, covers all that. So it's awesome. All right, people, if you like my Rick's and like, subscribe, check out the Rick's and read this link in the description, check out the castle, please, check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.